Hello and welcome back to the Meaningful People Podcast. Podcast. We sat down with Shimi Adar, aka Shimrit Adar, aka Ms. Jimmy. Um, an amazing person. Yeah. She. Uh, by the way, we we know there's probably a lot of her audience and her followers listening to this. So. Welcome to Meaningful People. And for those people coming back, thanks for coming back. Um, something really amazing about her, so far she's the first guest that came in three days before she gave birth, three days after this interview. And we didn't know when, when she came in that she was going to give birth in three days, but yeah, it's just still a cool fact. So go ahead and listen to the rest of this episode. I think you'll love it. And once again, a Let's shout out. Let's give a more background to oh, her. Oh, shoot. Let's no. do this over. No, let's keep Should that. We, no, because because this is a lesson over here. Ah. People people make mistakes sometimes, and that's okay. Not people. Nahi makes mistakes twenty four <laughs> hours. A I'm day. actually keeping it because Nahi made the mistake. No, um, but it's totally fine. Uh, Shimi is someone who who pushes for happiness. She's a a boss mitzvah motivator, but she's really so much more than that. She's a happiness she's, activist. So many people <laughs> look up to her, and you'll see why she's such an incredible, fun, lively, just awesome person you're gonna see that find and out more about our journey and how she became who she is how she is so happy and and yeah all that good stuff and once again a shout out to amr pharmacy our friends and partners over there you guys know where to find them ciao enjoy the episode I'm why are you hold on let's address that stop uh, saying ciao he said uh, okay we're pro now nah, he's saying ciao at the end of the episode but he starts singing in the I intro lot, also. i get a lot of flack for it and it's just a response to my bullying the people bullying me okay yeah enjoy the episode Welcome to the Meaningful People Podcast, the podcast where we talk to people who are... Meaningful. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay, this is your water. No, okay, it's I'm yours. I'm, I'm starting to record. Uh, okay. You're starting. I thought we started already. We oh, did start. We did? Yeah. Okay, so... Uh, sorry, now I can make my bracha. Baruch yeah, Amen. Amen. So, I, I heard a little... Svartiness sounding in there. Are in the you, Baruch. Are, is it a Svarti thing or an Israeli thing? It's a Svarti it's a represent. I'm half Yemenite. Oh, okay. Half Moroccan. And a whole lot of Ashkenaz. I went to like Ashkenaz schools, camps. But it's not in the blood. It, it's in my neshama though. Okay. I definitely feel like I was Hasidish in my past life. Really? Haimish, yeah. I went to Camp Hadar. Do you understand what that means? You don't know what Camp I, Hadar is. I don't know is. anything about Camp Hadar. I what know is, because it's way like... When I was your age, there was Camp Adar. Okay. And I was in Achiez Shiva. And, my, and I was living in Bar Park, so my t- and all my friends were Bar Parkers. And she's like, Shimmy, you're going to Camp Adar. And I'm like, no, what is this? We don't go to sleepaway camps. She's like, Shimmy, I'm telling you, trust me. And literally, if we like trace back in time, mm-hmm. you re- this is how I met Danielle. Like we could, I- I'll, it's okay. amazing. Danielle this is one your moment husband. That husband. Oh, my so- husband, Danielle. If I wouldn't have His last to... name is Hadar. Is that a coincidence over Adar. here? Adar. 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 Oh, never mind. I don't but, know you so well. Did you just say Hadar? <laughs> yeah, I thought your last name was Hadar. You had one job to get my name oh my straight, Rabbi Oh, slay me. I know your name. I know everything. It's oh, it's, <laughs> it's fine. Adar, like the Chodesh Adar. Oh, nice. Should, should I tell you how we got the name Adar? People think yeah. it's Sephardi, but it's not. Mm. My husband, his father, before he converted, he went to Eretz Yisrael, and he he went to Ish. Um, I was going to say H.com. He went to H.com, H.Torah, H-Torah, H-Torah <laughs> yeah. fell in love with Judaism and decided he wanted to convert. And this he, is Daniel's father? Daniel's father. Wow. And what, was, what was he? He, I'll tell you in a second, it's crazy. So he went and he said he decided he wanted to become Jewish. His father's father is from Switzerland and his father's mother's from Hawaii. Whoa. I know, right? And... So that's where we're a big mix because I'm Yemeni, I'm Moroccan. Imagine just like the whole mu- and situation. He is. And he's he's Ashkenaz, who you know. But what was his father? His father was Ashkenaz. I mean, he he had Ashkenaz. What was monogamy. before he was Jewish? Before he was just reg regular. Is regular, yeah. <laughs> Swiss, no, he, was, yeah, he wasn't from, but he was Hasidish. Yeah, like, no. oh, was he Mexican? <laughs> was okay. he? You know, he was like I want something American. He was American. American. Okay, and he was very. He became very close to the Baba Rebbe. Okay. Um, once this whole transition came about, and the Baba Rebbe said, "We need to give you a last name, a Jewish last name," because his last name was Carlson. 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 So he said, "I'm going to give you the happiest month." of the Jewish calendar, Adar, wow. with an Aleph. Mm. And he knew that the future daughter-in-law was gonna wear tutus, represent all year round, and that's her holding. 
Wow. Shimi Hadar. That is crazy stuff. Wow. Okay, so back to Camp Hadar. Okay, I got your oh, name. Oh, okay, okay. Got the name down. Okay, it's going it. to be happening. He's like, wait, let's go back because we're going to be all over the place. Let's go everywhere. Hadar, <laughs> um, Camp Hadar was a Haimishi camp. It closed down. I felt like every, every camp I left closed down. Camp Fega. I left, it closed down. Machon, I left, it closed down. I can't leave places. Oh, gosh. But um, in Camp Adar, everybody was like Chayrifki, Sprintsi, Ruchi, you know, Chani, and then it was Shimrit. Back then, I was Shimrit. Your full name is Shimrit? Shimrit. I don't know how I became Shimmy. I legit don't know how it happened, but I think... I, think I used I to think Shimmy was a boy's name, and now because of you, I think a lot of people think it's, it's just it's a, a girl's, girl's name. name. I bet you there's some people listening now that they clicked on it, they're like, oh, Shimmy's a girl. No. Exactly. Yeah. At this uh, point, yeah. At this point, not anymore, but okay. I, I could hear. I bet you there's someone here. There's it's, a Shimmy in Lakewood. There's a girl there's Shimmy in Shimmy. Lakewood, and she was with me in Camp Fega. Yeah. Was she, she always Shimmy? I mean, her mother was with me in Camp Fega, and I think she was named after her grandmother, Shima, or something. She wouldn't call you Shimmy because there's a girl Shimmy out there. It's not so bad. Okay. And we're making Shimmy. If you were listening to this thinking that we're interviewing a boy Shimmy, then I don't you know. You know what I find the, no. <laughs> with the names? The name Alicia, the Hebrew name, I think it's a beautiful name. But in the non Jewish world, the name Alicia, Alicia like, is, a girl's, is name. a girl's name. But it's just so like, I don't even, it's such different type of names. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, Shimmy, I'm like S H I M I. Yeah, you know, it works. It when works. I do, I do like I I uh, volunteer for different organizations. So when I do the Hasidic organizations, now they know me by now. But the first time I went there, all the kinderlach came when I came to the to the hotel, and they're like, "Your name is Shimmy. What is? I don't get it. It's a boy's name." I'm like, "I know." <laughs> they're is? like, "What's your last name?" I'm like, "Adar." They're like. Udid, so they call me Shimmy Udid. And I, lo- I love that. That's the cutest thing. Works. Yeah, anything works. Whatever you want to call me. The reason why is because they never could pronounce my name. I would say, what's your, what's your name? Shimrit Danino. They're like, wait, what's your first name? What's your last name? I'm like, Shimrit Danino. Shimris? I'm like, Shimrit. They couldn't, they couldn't um, so you're, pronounce my name. You're originally from Israel, right? Israel, Natanya, the most beautiful city in the world. You're from Natanya. Nat- of course. No way, I went there. Where do we get all this Benazman energy from? By the way, I just want to let everyone know that the AC is not working. By the way, I, I want to say <laughs> that like on the intro. 130 degrees in here. And you're nine <laughs> months pregnant. But doesn't killing makes you stronger, Lachaim. And you're nine months pregnant, so thank I'm you. Not, I'm actually do like. Well, listen, when people tomorrow, are, when people are listening <laughs> to this, 24 hours. When people are listening to this. It could be already, you know. This, yeah, visit when. Well, yeah, they'll you know. Could be walking your kid down the chuppah. Like, like, <laughs> who, who knows? Who knows? Wow. But yeah, it's hot in here and. That's how we get the good stuff in these interviews, you know? <laughs> this is an interrogation. I, I think start they did it on your mind. purpose. You start losing you your mind on a purpose. bit. Yeah. Like, we I don't want not. her to think straight. So, I so, think so how old were you when you moved to America from Israel? I was six years old. Okay. And my father came here for business opportunities. He came first to see if it's going to work out. And he's like, y'all coming along for the ride. And at that time, they were not religious. Um, I mean, they were misurotim, you know, like they kept Shabbat. Like traditional, traditional, like the classic very, very traditional. Chagim, uh, Shabbat. Like more connected to Hashem than me, and I am from. <laughs> like you know that. Yeah, type. but they didn't like care so much about like Isra Chag. Maybe right. I don't know, or maybe they did. They they're very connected, but um, all the Israelis. We went straight to Bar Park. We went straight to Bar Park. Is, is, was that a move back then? That's yeah, like all the Israelis went to Bar Park. Like that was the place to go, mm-hmm. and a lot of them sent their kids to Chazer Yeshiva, which is in Bar Park. Which is in. And Flatbush, and Flatbush, like down by X and Litfish, 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 like no, past, past the Litfish, past the Syrians, okay, <laughs> X and Ocean Park, right? And that's where I was till seventh grade. Um, it, it, it was it was a really nice upbringing. Like I loved it. I loved being in Achiezer. I feel like it made me who I am. And I also was with my bar. I had I had the best of both worlds. Um. And I actually skipped eighth grade, not because I was doing great in school, because they were like, we want you out of here. <laughs> Skip eighth grade. <laughs> no, they, um, they, they felt that I, I was going to Camp Vega at the mm-hmm. time. Yeah. And my friends were a, a grade older. I was left back when I was in first grade because I didn't speak the language when we came. Mm. So they said, we're going to put you again in first grade. Um, and then, well, sorry. That's okay. Um, so you caught up. I caught up. And so what happened was in fifth grade, um, my teacher, Devari Shore, this is a shout out to Devari Shore because she literally, if I think about it, she sent me to Camp Adar. And because I went to Camp Adar, um, I went to Camp Fega. And when I was in Camp Fega, all my friends were going to high school. 
and I was still in seventh grade. And they're like, should we just skip eighth grade? Just skip eighth grade, come with us to Machon. I'm like, I'm, I'm going from Achiezer to Machon. It's like a whole world apart. It's like, just do it. And I did that, I skipped eighth grade. My friends were not happy with me. I was like, I love you guys, but. Peace. Yeah, peace out. And I went to Machon. Um, and in Machon, I met Nechi Kohn, who was, when she got engaged, her chatan, Mir Samcha Kohn, made our shidduch. No way. So, if, like, connecting the dots, it's incredible. This is now, sure. They're everyone very can sure. Write, everyone can write their own Imuna Sefer just looking at their life, no? Yeah. It's amazing. But we could only connect the dots looking back, you yeah. know? And looking forward, it's like, things sometimes don't make wires. sense. It's yeah, jum- it's like, it's, it's a little up. confusing. But what, trust me, what it was it? Sense. Was it a religious, like, hardship for you going from a certain environment to a more from or less from I don't even know what type of environment with all these different girls yeah so when I was in Achiezer the girls were amazing they were such great girls I loved them they were great friendships however I you know I wasn't holding where they were holding at the time and that's why she wanted me to go to from camp um I remember in seventh grade like and they were living their their lifestyle, and I, I wanted to fit in. I wanted to be part of the crowd. Right. And they would go to ice skating every single Sunday night. Mm-hmm. And I remember, like, I had to I had to be part of the the group, so I would take the train all the way to Coney Island Avenue where the ice skating rink is. And in Bar Park, I was wearing skirts, but I had to please, you know my friends and I remember just like on the train like oh my gosh the peer pressure I felt it and I remember like taking off my skirt getting into my pants everyone looking at me on the train like what is she doing I'm like it's not what it looks like it's peer pressure (laughs) and I just remember like at one point I was like you know what I'm done I'm not this was in seventh grade I'm not living for other people anymore and they were great like they this is you know that's how their lifestyle was and they were so holy and connected but for me you know I, I it wasn't good for me i always say there's good in everyone but not everyone's good for you mm. you know and i just i remember at that point I, i'm just living for myself i want to do the right thing and i always say that like when you're living for yourself and you're living for a kaddish baruch Hu, you start living because when you're living for other people you can never reach your potential because you're always scared what they're going to say, what they're not going to say, like, and, and you can never be who you really are. But the second you're like, I don't care what anyone else thinks. As long as you're doing the right thing, you're going to reach your, the greatest heights. It's, that sounds like that story was a defining moment in your life. That- oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like on that train on a Sunday afternoon, I was like, this wow. is it. No more. It's funny because now he also, he had peer pressure to wear skirts and he's like, you know what? I, I can't. This happens every episode. I need to wear pants. Every time Yaakov I, I goes. <laughs> and by the way, you also. Yeah, the Obachshan. So you feel wearing, me, you feel me. Yeah. Yes. Uh, wow, okay, that's, that's incredible. And then let's talk I want to talk about a little like what you do now I don't exactly even fully know you're, you're I don't even know what you I'm do doing a, now you do a lot of things one of the things you do is, is boss mitzvah about this? Let, let's start let's do, like, let's do like this yeah finish a sentence oh I like that Shimi Adar this is how I fail test by the way yeah. they're tricky <laughs> I, I think I know the answer and then it's, they're it's, like nope it, you're wrong Shimi Adar is good at eating pizza okay so she has a pizzeria you, you, you see do you see why i fail tests <laughs> like no that's not what we were getting Sometimes. at no but that's a real answer but you i think you're no, but like i'm really good at it <laughs> <laughs> your description you make people happy for a living you know what the um the other day they put me as a, a, a judge on a panel for this lego contest in la <laughs> i feel really cool because they asked me to be on there also no jj duckman yeah, <laughs> yeah. JJ yeah. Duchman. No, okay, i'm making it i'm making jj duckman is changing the world a lego contest yeah so you're a lego, they no, but you it's big, like they're getting the the big lego masters i guess there's a show out there and they're gonna do the final okay so, so you, we, we were like the leading up to that you're a judge on it yeah and one of the descriptions was shimmy adar activist and i was like i was never referred to as an activist right I'm like, Danielle, what does activist even mean? <laughs> He's like, yeah, you're, you're an activist for change. You want, you know, you- What change I, are you trying to activate? I, I want to make the world a happier place. I want people, I want to bring happiness to people. I want to make people realize that they have the power to change the world themselves. 
and that they have greatness within them. Like Charlie Rye always says, you don't become great. You are great already. Yeah. You just you gotta, you gotta release it. You know, you gotta unlock your greatness. And that's what I really want to do. I just want to spread some chah. So, so the reason great. someone schmeichels. Did you hear the new song? Oh, There's a new with, song uh, with Barry yeah, Weber. Yeah. yeah. The Thank oh, You Hashem very song. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's your, it's I'll test you. written by you. It's something by, produced it's by you. It was inspired. Acti- activisted by you. I mean, I don't even know who actually came up with the Be The Reason Someone Smiles, but it just stuck. I loved it. I'm like, yes! that that That's so that's it. One of the it's, modes you do is, is you're, I don't know, bas mitzvah, bat mitzvah. I never know how to, to say it, but... I, it depends on where you are. Okay. In T-neck, in five so towns, I, I think I say in bas, Denver. Bas mitzvah. You're a bas mitzvah motivator. Is that the proper term? Yeah, I'm a motivator, but I realized, I want to tell you, that one of the first ones that I've ever done, it was in Passaic, and I remember the dancing, the lights, the, the, the camera was on us. The energy was insane. Like, it was labor I, I I remember walking in, everybody was like, very shy. And I'm like, hey guys, what's up? And they're like, I'm like, what's your name? They're like, whatever, I don't Shai know. <laughs> yeah, they, they, don't even, they don't even know their name. And, they're, and that's, that's where I love, because they, they're so shy. And I, I'm able, not me, it's all from a Baruch Hu, But I'm hopefully motivating them to, to get on the dance floor. It was amazing, really successful about mitzvah. After one of the aunts came over to me, she's like, Shimmy, hmm. I still get called to principal's office till today. <laughs> Were you like, uh-oh. I was oh, like, man. oh, here we go again. And she said, um, Shimmy, you have such a kayak. I don't want you to make it just about the dancing, just about the singing the prizes. I'm like, so, so what do you want me to do? She's like, I have a message. These girls look up to you. And you can make a difference. Whatever you do in life, you have to elevate it. You have to make it spiritual. It, that's what it's about. Mm. And since then, I really try to, it's not about the party. It's not about the physicality. It's about that kid on the side. It's about making a difference, you know? And I hope I do that. I hope that they, they feel that connection. And I try to do that with whatever it is that I do, like be the reason someone smiles. I have different types of jobs. I also work with my husband as I do, the, I administer drug and alcohol testing for mm-hmm. the commercial industry. Really? So all bus drivers have random selections every other week. So it's me that has to come in at seven in the morning and like they're really unhappy with me. I'm like, it's not me, it's the DOT. <laughs> and even then I, I come in, they have a sign in sheet and I look at it, they're all like, nobody wants to be there. They just did a round from five in the morning and they come to me and I look at the sign and sheet I'm like Roberto Hernandez come on down you just want a urine test yeah. <laughs> and so whatever it is that we do we just gotta bring smiles to people and, and it's really it's, it's an easy, sometimes it's difficult but it's so easy to make someone smile and that's I, I want people to understand that you are, know? are you always happy? Uh, no. Hello. First of all, I'm a woman. <laughs> no. Second of all, I'm human. We can't say that. You could say yeah, that. Yeah, I could, I could say that. Ladies, you got me. You know. You know. Um, but I'm human. But, so there are bad days, I guess. And there are bad days. There are days where I'm sad, where I'm lonely, where I'm down, where I'm just not in a mood. I'm just not in a mood. But you know what? I, I really feel like if I go out there, I... I I have a responsibility to be on my best behavior. Even if inside I'm really not feeling up to it so much, why should you like take my garbage? Why do I need to spread it to you? What if you had the worst day ever and now I, here I come and I add to it? That's just not right. You know, there's a time and place for everything. There's a person who you could speak to and it, I, like you have to embrace those moments when you're feeling down, when you're feeling lonely, when you're feeling just not up to it. And you know, like I was telling Rabbi Yaakov the other day, just it's how much we, we delve into that. Like it's okay and you have to embrace those feelings, but how long are you gonna stay in that rut? You know how people say time heals? Mm-hmm. I don't believe in that statement. Time doesn't heal because there are people that could stay in that rut for 90 years and then they look back and they're like, they're still in that rut. It's what you do with that time. So embrace it, you know, give it what it needs and then like, I gotta get up, I gotta keep going, I gotta keep doing, cause you, you live one life and, and we gotta make the best out of every single moment. So in order to do that, I, that's another message that I really try to send to people. You have to surround yourself with people who motivate you, who love you, who encourage you, who lift you up when you can't lift yourself up. It's so much easier to be 
the best that you could be and to believe in yourself and to be happy when you're surrounded by people who live that way. It's contagious. Oh yeah, and the same thing, negativity. If you sense negativity, ain't nobody got time for that. Run the other way so fast. Because yeah, it's going to suck you in so fast. There's a video on, on like the subway where you have everyone just sitting there, sh- you know, straight face. And this one person started laughing. laughing right. So and everyone else started laughing. So it's like a real thing. And then you see the people are trying so hard not to laugh. Yeah. And you're like, I got you too. They all ended up laughing. It's just so contagious. Right. That's, that's amazing. Um, I think what's amazing is that you guys don't have notes. Like when I do my shimmy schmooze, <laughs> I, I need notes. I have a pen. I have my paper. Because if, like, let's say when we're talking, I have a thought that comes into mind. I need to write it down because by the time we're up to the next subject, I forget what I wanted to tell you. Yeah, so we... Does anyone ever feel that way? And then the whole time you're just trying to think, what did I want to say? And I'm not even listening to you anymore. It's a hard balance because we, like, a part of us wants to, like, move on to the next topic, but we also want to delve into what we're discussing. Right. So how do... Where's your sign that you're like, okay, Shimmy... You're talking too much. Uh, um, we like it. It's, it's, it's organic. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Not same, just like looks at, same, his, the, at his watch. The same way milk spoils, so do conversations. Yeah. <laughs> you can go on as long as you I'd want. I'd go on until we start Surely spoiling. We'll, we'll cut it in posts when she's not here. <laughs> so if you want to. Um, Surely there's your edit sign. So you're, you're, you're very popular on Instagram. I think you have almost... 30,000 followers? Uh, I don't know. Who's if I'm counting 29.4? No, I'm just joking. I have no idea. Uh, but you know what? At Shimia Dar. At, at Shimia Dar. Follow. You, 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 you'll, you'll thank me. No, but when people come, oh, you're the famous Shimia Dar. I get that a lot lately. I'm like, you know what famous means? Famous means that you just have to be kinder because more people know you. When you're walking the street, that kid knows you. She's not gonna say hello, perhaps, because she's intimidated or scared, but she knows you. Wow. Yeah. Go out of your way to say hello to her because you're putting yourself out there. And, you know, sometimes, unfortunately, we see people abuse the privilege. They're like, oh, you're the famous one. Like, oh, yes, I have 30,000. I cannot talk to you anymore because I'm better than everybody else. It just means you have that much more opportunity to give. And it's very scary. It comes what, with the bigger highest. What was life like for you before Instagram before you got on Instagram before Shamia Dar got on Instagram and I guess took on a, a big persona I guess right what was it like I don't do even remember, remember. Do, do you remember what it was like before Meaningful Minute <laughs> right maybe <laughs> drop um, the phone drop the phone um, yeah, I don't know it's different because this, this is your personal brand so your Instagram page right, is who that's you are true. it's me Th- that's another thing like because I am who I am on Instagram, I'm not a fashion blogger, clearly. Um, I'm not a food blogger. I'm just me, and I just want to spread my message through it. Um, so it, 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 there's a lot of responsibility that comes with it, and I feel it, and I'm always asking myself, like, would I ever give that up? And just, like, I always have that that. Str- would, you? What? Would, you, would you ever just give it up? Never. I will never give it up because I see the impact that it makes. Yeah, you, you could touch so many people's lives. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah one, but at one. the same time, sometimes it does get overwhelming. It does get very overwhelming. I'm like, I just want to be like a normal person. And, and what, what does normal even mean, right? right. But, but like, no, I, 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 if for someone who who's probably sees you, you have so many followers, I, I, I could understand how they'll be like, come on, but like you have 30,000 followers. What does that mean? It's but, just a number. No, it's, but they they could hear you being like, but like, why are you complaining about it? Like, but there is a pressure, I guess, that- Oh my gosh, there's a pressure. I did a bas mitzvah, um, I'm actually in five towns, and the, there's always guests from, from out of town, you know, and one of the guests were like, hey, we're, we're the cousins from whatever state it was. And I'm like, oh my gosh, it's so nice to meet you. And he's like, you know, my daughter follows you every single night. She messaged you four months ago, and she, every night, she goes to see if you responded to her. Uh oh. I'm like, no pressure, epic fail. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and I don't know that. I, I, I have thou- literally thousands of messages on WhatsApp, on Instagram, Facebook. No, I don't know. That's a lie. I don't even. I, 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 I don't remember when the last time I went on Facebook. You're like my LinkedIn profile. <laughs> There's so many messages there. Like, does anyone still have Facebook? Um, but. See, but that little girl, that, that's the pressure that it comes with. And I, I want to please everybody, and you just can't. Um, especially when you're, when you're trying to balance your family and this image that I... I this how's it, how's it like for your, for your kids? I've, I've, I spent Pesach with you, and I got the honor to get to know your husband and your kids. But 
is it what's it like for them being that their 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 mom is a big personality people are always coming over to her right so the thing is is that my kids don't know any better this is how they were raised like i've been in camp since fifth grade and i've never left hmm. so like people always knew me not on this scale obviously but they always knew me um, I was in Camp Vega, then I was as a married staff right. with the Ellie. She was a baby. And then The Zone, I was there for 12 years. Um, which, by the way, The Zone, mwah, I love them. I am who I am today also because of them. They played such an integral part. Did they close down also? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, okay. They, they got to keep going. They are doing such holy work. Um, I guess you're still there. Um, you, th th you know what I mean? You, there, you said it. Once you're part of the zone, you always, you never leave. My right. nishama is always there. So they don't know any different to the, on the contrary, like if I'm not the shimmy that all you know, um, they're like, Ima, is everything okay? You know, I, I, I remember I had to go visit someone in the hospital. They asked me to, to, they called me up to do a, little, a visit from an organization. And I was like, I was just n not in a mood. So I said, I'm just gonna go in regular clothing. Without my tutu, I had my flat, I had my whole thing like all geared up. I was just, I'm just gonna go regular. I was a regular human being just like everybody else. And I remember my my son was like, Ima, you have to, you have to put your gear on. I'm like, I know, they're gonna understand. The fact that I'm going to visit is a nice thing on its own, like, you know? He's like, you know, you have to, you have to put your gear on. Like, you're gonna put a smile on their face. And I was like, when your kid tells you that, you know, you know, you have to um, put the gear on. But I remember putting the gear on. I remember wearing a superhero cap, a uh, cape, and I had Superman socks. And as I went into Cornell in that big hallway, this lady runs over to me and she says, "Shimmy," I oh, shouldn't say "Shimmy." She doesn't know who I am, but um. She was actually a, a, a Christian woman. She said, I just want to tell you, I realize you're getting dressed up, you're going to visit someone, and you brought, you're not coming to visit me. And you brought a smile to my face. And I was like, hmm. oh my gosh. She's like, my son is, I don't remember what floor he's on, he's in a coma. She's like, just looking at you made me smile. And I was like, wow. But going back to what you said about my kids. We're gonna get back to our interview conversation with Shimmy Adar. But first, we want to say a special, big, huge, awesome thank you to our friends at AMR Pharmacy. Nahi, go ahead and read me that stat that we just we saw. We came across an interesting stat that we just want to read to you. It says, according to the recent study done by Johns Hopkins, more than 250,000 people every year in the United States die because of medical mistakes. Now, something that falls under that category is people that they have their 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 pill box or whatever it is and they by mistake take the wrong medication the wrong dose too much too little that's and our that, that's our rashi on it i think that's part of it yeah that's part of it and you know amr has this groundbreaking this is really awesome just just straight up really awesome these blister packs um single packs and uh for those listening you can't see it but you could hear there are m right now there are there. m ms in there yeah. which mm. i'm about to go at but no but we should do it by the day like because it's um so it, it literally breaks it down so easy that it's so easy even your grandmother could do it not and, and for it. those who are not watching this and listening i'm looking at a, a chart that has sunday morning noon evening bedtime and then monday morning noon evening bedtime all separated the all Medicaid, separated the meds the that right, you need the right pills for the right days and you don't need to do it amr does it for you exactly they learn your regimen and they give it to you and yeah, I have over here free delivery, tailored for you, accurate doses, no additional costs, refilled automatically. It's a no brainer, guys and girls. If there's a pharmacy that you need, go to AMR if you're in New, if you're in New York, New Jersey. 848 222 1110. That's 848 222 1110. Or you can go ahead and visit amrfarmrx.com. I don't have to spell the way farm is spelled because you heard me say it so many times already on previous episodes, but I'll do it anyways. P H A R M. Guys, check them out. They're the only pharmacy that you need, your mother needs, your grandfather, your grandmother, everyone in your family. I want to interrupt with something. Uh, they're amazing. And so many people are talking about them. And also, this is unrelated to the ad. Uh, a lot of people have stopped me and they said, oh, you had Shimia Daron? Give me a shout out. And I got a lot of them. I don't remember oh, all their names. Okay. Um, uh, Liba or Libby. Libby. Liba. Liba from White House. Liba from White House. Here's your, Here's shout, your out. shout out. Everyone else, please use, use AMR Pharmacy. And now, back to the show. But going back to what you said about my kids, because I'm involved in different organizations, 
um, one of the things I used to do was go out with girls who Nabach don't have homes, you know, they're struggling in life. And I used to take them out every Thursday night. And I remember one Thursday night, I would, I was, I, I did a gig, I came home, I was on the couch chilling with my kids. That's like the best thing. If you ask me what the best thing in life for me. What's the best thing in life for you? Oh, sitting on the couch with my kids, just like spending time with them, no phone. I loved it and I was like, I was enjoying every moment. I didn't have energy. I had events the whole week. I literally, I remember I couldn't even pick up my pinky. I remember saying to my kids, I'm like, I have no energy. And I was like, shoot, it's Thursday. I need to go out with the girls and with this club. And my kids are like, you have to go. I'm like, no, no, I cannot move. I'm with my kids. This is a moment. I'm cherishing. I'm calling them up. I'm saying I'm not, I'm not going. And I remember one of my kids got up and said, Ima, you have to go. I'm like, guys, but I'm with, I'm spending time with you. You don't, thank you, Ima, we're going to have you on Chavez. These girls have you once a week. You can't let them down. And that's when I was like, thank you, Hashem, that my kids not only uh, support what I do, they encourage me when I can't even feel like they realize the impact you're it. making on the people and they know how important it I is I bring them I try to bring them to every single chesed opportunity every single organization when I speak it's not separate worlds the chesed and your kids are uh, no 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 because when you do chesed on the expense of your children that's not true chesed right that's not true chesed because chesed is not on the expense of somebody else you might as well not even do it they have to be on board you know because then the, what happens is they're going to resent you and they're not gonna be proud of what you're doing. So I really, I bring them to, when I speak, I was like, you guys are sitting front row. Like, mm -hmm. I'm your mama, right? Who's proud <laughs> of their mama? I, I want them, like when we do events for cancer patients, I want them on the dance floor with the kids. You know, when we're doing Hask events, when I'm doing Shabbatones, I, I try to be, because I always say, you wanna teach your kids chinuch, real chinuch? Don't tell them be kind. Don't tell them be nice, do good. Show them. and. And, and live it and allow them to watch you do it and be part of it. And that's the ultimate chinuch that you could ever give to your children, I believe. And, and it's not just you in that role, there's also your husband. Oh, he has, I cannot, okay, can we go back for a second? Yeah, I, first of all, I apologize, I didn't even give him a shout out till now it's not me, it's the heat in here. <laughs> I, I hope not he's building people listen to this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? I cannot do anything and be who I am if it wasn't for my husband. First of all, I always say, which husband allows his wife to walk around in a tutu on Central Avenue, right? <laughs> He's like, he does it, we have a rule. You don't tell me how to dress, I don't tell you how to dress, we're good to go. <laughs> but when, we, when I was dating, I dated other, other guys who were very special people. But I told them from the get-go, I'm like, I wanna change the world, I wanna go out there, I wanna make a difference, and they're like, yeah, we respect that, that's awesome, that's cool. I'm like, no, no, I don't need you to respect it. Hmm. I need you to be on board holding my hand like when I can't do it anymore and I'm like getting tired and weak in doing so, you're gonna be like, no, no, Shimmy, why did Hashem put you on this world, you know? And, and, and that's, that's Daniel, how do Hashem that I, I, I'm doing a Shabbat on the Shabbos. Really? You know, I'm what? like. You're due tomorrow. I know, I'm due tomorrow. <laughs> and they're like, we don't care. We want, we want you at, um, it's a, the chill in Lakewood. Very cool. Um, an incredible place. But th that's why I'm so happy that I married Daniel because he, he's like, shimmy these girls, you could connect to them. You have another opportunity. It's gonna be a schus to have easy labor. Do you, do you see a difference? I hope so. Yeah, Ritz Hashem. Do you see a difference in what you do now, let's say by the Bas Mitzvahs, getting, getting the girls involved and making them smile? Do you see a difference now versus like 10 years ago? Um, 100%, because I'm not the same person that I was 10 years ago. So like in the beginning, I used to be like, maybe I would come a little late because I had to make a grand entrance. I'm the entertainer. Now, I come a half hour before. I want to be there with the family. See, it's not about your title. It's not about, you know, mm -hmm. who, who, it's not about that. It's about the opportunity that I have in front of me. And I, I, I didn't realize what it was back then. And as time goes on and I'm trying to work on myself and making myself realize, before I walk into an event, I'm like, Hashem, there's a reason why I'm here. There's somebody that I need to connect to. There's somebody that I need to make an impact on. And I walk in there, whether it's a Bubby, whether it's a Zadie, I, I try to connect to anyone that I can. 
So when I walk out of there, I, I, I could say, you know what? I made a difference in that kid. Also, like when they're, they're eating their dinner at a bat mitzvah, you know? I, I, I could eat it by the stage. I sit with the girls. And people are like, Shimi, you don't have to sit with the girls. Like, what? I'm like, do you realize how hailing these girls are? These girls are amazing. Like, I have this chutz to sit with all these Basmitsa girls. I'm going to take every chance that I could get. You know? Are they, are they, is there like more of a, a battle to make them smile, to get them involved, you know, phones or stuff like that? Or Surprisingly, I'll tell you what, I, I really try to warm up with the girls beforehand. And I'm like, okay, who's going to make me help? Help Estes Bas make Estes Bas Mitzvah the best bar mitzvah ever. You, you, you. Okay, guys, I need you on board. All I need is like five girls, and then we're good to go. Because imagine it's your bar. I, I, I talk to them. We warm up. Like imagine it was your bar mitzvah, and we have the grand entrance, and everyone's on their cell phones. Right. You feel horrible. It's like I know you're right. And literally, believe on her. I don't have a problem with the with the cell phones. They're all on the dance floor, um, realizing that they have, you know, their their part of a team with me. Talking about phones, you you are a big activist for the drop the phone. I see what you did there. For the drop the phone movement. Can you tell us more about that? Yes, I used to have a Sunday program um, in Brooklyn, New York. Shimmy to Jumba, it was amazing. I had, I, you know, I wish I could have done, continued because it, it really was something magical. They would get dressed up um, every, every Sunday. We had themes and one of the Sundays, it was a Snapple theme. And one of the girls just up like a whole peach, dye peach. Now I'm like, dye and peach, you're a winner in my eye. Like, that's the <laughs> best sample, right? And she wrote, made dye from the best. Dye peach is the best. Right? Regular peach. Oh, oh, I thought you were agreeing with me. No, come Regular on. Regular peach. Dye peach. Hi, right, guys, comment <laughs> below. You'll see, I'll take the lead. But um, this girl got just, she, like, that's what I wanted. I wanted them to prepare for it so they could be excited. People made costumes. And she wrote, made from the best stuff on earth. And I'm like, I love your outfit. I'm calling your mother right now. And I, there were a bunch of girls in Die Peach, so you, you can't go back and know which girl this <laughs> okay. was. But I, I, call, I, I told her, I said, I want to call your mother and give her a nachas call and tell her how proud I am of you. You, you. you just made me smile. She's like, don't even bother calling her. Just message her on Instagram because that's where she's at all day. Um. And that was like, da -da -da -da. Oh, So I was like, if I hear this, I was the... I had to hear that for a reason. Either I could say, oh, I never this generation. And then you go ahead and message her on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Or I could say, I need to do something about this because if the kids are feeling that there's something wrong, you know, and we need, we need to start raising awareness. And that's when I was like, what can I do? What can I do? I always say, drop the mic, drop the mic. I'm like, I'm going to call it, drop the phone. Make it cool, make it exciting, but raise awareness. And that's when I started job the drop the phone movement and I initiative. And if I tell you to do something, I have to do it too. I, I'm very guilty. I used to run upstairs to my room like, you know, and but I, I'm like, it, it's, it's really affecting our lives, our relationships. And if we don't do something about it, our relationships are gonna be so far gone. It's gonna be so much harder to connect. It's gonna be too, so what, too what, late. What so is it? what is it? What so is drop the phone movement? I, I, I knew that I can't ask for too much, mm. you know? but I could ask for one hour. One hour a day, one hour a day, you drop the phone, but not drop the phone like you have supper and everybody puts, you know, like- when The you way our the, phones are dropped right now. Right now, yes, we are completely guilty. Um, but you put it away in another room completely and you shut it off. Because if it's there, you're looking at it, it's buzzing, you want like, it's, it's, it's teasing, it's a teaser, right? Yeah. You're like, I just want to check it. And so you're not really there with the kids. So many, um, People tell me like I'm with the kids physically, but my mind is not there. I'm a com I'm completely somewhere else. Put it away in another room, out of you know, out of mind, out of sight, um, or vice versa. And that one hour will change your life. I need that, to do this. Oh wait, my god! No, 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 I tried it. I'm literally addicted to my phone. I, you, but you before like yeah, not so long. I thought you were like five minutes. You said an hour. I'm like whoa. <laughs> I'm not kidding. You don't know how many people messaged me and they were like. I can't do an hour. Shimmy, I can't. It's too much. I'm like, so start somewhere. 20 minutes, th half hour, start somewhere. But I want to do it. I'm going to do that. Inspired, it's inspired by your movement. Last year, we someone reached out to Meaningful Minute. Their, their son had a major brain injury. And they wanted to know if we could do an initiative for the nine days, which I don't know when people are listening to this, but the nine days are next week starting. And 
we said, okay, what do you have in mind? They said, we want people to make real connections. So let's, let's do a campaign where people shut their phone for an hour a day, every day of the nine days. So, okay, we said, you know, Shimmy does something like this. And then we spoke about yes, it. Yeah. And we started this initiative, you know, for the nine days, sign up. And we had around 2,500 people logged in that they sh- shut their phone for an hour each day for the nine days. And this lady called me on like the fourth day, fifth day. And she said, for the first time since his brain injury, he squeezed a doctor's hand. Stop. This kid is this mother, and we're doing this this year again because he's not fully back, but he's swimming. But we saw chi- he's what? walking. He's Hold talking. Hashem. He still has ways Thank to go, but Hashem. we're doing it again this year for his refusalim. I don't know the name offhand, but people will see it going around, um, or you already had see it whenever you're listening to this. But it's an inc- it has it's an incredible thing to get people to get off their phones and to connect with the people around them. We don't realize the effect that it's making on our relationship, but I also want to add one more thing. I say it out loud. Don't just do it. I want, like, tell your spouse, yeah? Your, yeah. What, what, you say, I am dropping my phone right now because you matter to me more than this phone. Let's put our phones away. Make, make it a conscious decision. I'm talking to you. We're looking into each other's eyes. We're communicating. When, when was the last time, like, we just sat and I'm like, how was your day? Shabbos. You know? <laughs> Friday night is... It's not enough, though. Yeah, we, right. you're right. It's not enough. There, there's so much to happen in your kid's day, and we're, 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 we're losing it. And, and, and we don't realize one hour, one hour, one hour. It's going to add up. It's going to add up. And you, before you know it, you're going to look back and you say, wow, my, my relationship is so much better. And you might think, oh, one hour is nothing, or oh my gosh, right. so overwhelming. It's gonna change your life. I'm, I'm so, telling you. I'm jealous of Drop Amish people. Let's try it, Yako. Let's try it. Okay. Yes. We're, 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 we're gonna right here today. We're changing our lives. We'll drop the phone. Do you think the Amish community has like these type of issues? Pick like up the phone for an hour a day. <laughs> <laughs> we have one phone. We're passing it around. That's how the Amish community does it. Uh, what? What's their divorce rate? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> In the Amish community? I'm saying it's very low over there. Is, is it? it? I have no idea, but it makes <laughs> we sense. Know, our... We wouldn't know. <laughs> they can't yeah, Amishologists, no? You know yeah, this is what I study for a living. Um, you're, you're very well known in a certain way, and, and I, I think there's a lot to you that people, you know, there's a whole like private part of your life, right? What's something about you that, that no one knows? Besides for the people that we're about to give it to, though. <laughs> <laughs> um... I don't know. I just I I know that if you tell me a secret, I, I, it's probably not the answer that you're looking no, for. No, there's no but wrong answer. Good. Just, yeah, yes. it's not it's not hot enough in here. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you tell me a secret, I will take it to my grave. Like there is there's nothing that you you know everything is safe with me. Like I will keep it. I'll never slip up. That's a mystery, by the way. That falls on revealing a secret that someone doesn't want you to say that you know is Lashon Hara. That falls on the Lashon Hara. Right. No, no, I'm saying that's a, like, it's a mitzvah. It's, it's, oh, it's yeah. It's not just a like, oh, it's not like, it's literally You're doing like, a positive commandment. Ah, yeah. And I'm, doing, I'm just such a today. <laughs> people, what can people, I say? People don't know that about you? People think, oh, Shimi tells everybody she, everything. She can't keep her mouth <laughs> shut. I don't know. It's just something that, that's, I guess, a positive thing about me. What's something that people don't know about me? I think... What you see is what you get. Like, really? There's nothing? I don't know. I would have to ask the people right. around me. Like, you have something that people don't know about you that... Of course. What do you have that people don't know about really? you? My <laughs> hair is really orange and I dye it brown. <laughs> Before every episode, my hair is really black and I dye it orange. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, what's, Yaka, I don't what's know. What's something that people don't know about you? What a dumb question. Uh, <laughs> you see, it's very easy. I know, uh, yeah. It's very easy to sit in to our seats. To be the interviewer. Yeah. But I figured you're, you into the, the shimmy schmooze, you interview a lot of people on Instagram. So, like, right. you, you'll. I, right. So, it's easy because I just have the questions. I'm like, pressure's on you. What's, what's, so you, you know, as Corona happened and the pandemic, you know, went through, you started something on, on Instagram called the Shimmy Schmooze where you sit down with personalities in the Jewish communities and you talk to them for an hour or two hours, whatever it is. Seven hours later. Seven hours later, right. Welcome to the Shimmy Schmooze. What, what, is, what is something that you've learned, I guess, collectively from that experience talking to so many different people? Is there, is there a, a I've takeaway so much. message? Oh my gosh, I've learned so much. top three messages? I've learned that, like I said before, um, um, there's good in everyone and the, but not everyone's good for you like some people be like oh my gosh i love this one i didn't connect to that one i connected i'm like you can never please 
everyone. Right. We literally have that. We, with have, this that we have always. We always have that. People, <laughs> but the, the, people. the great thing is that there's something for everybody. Every, that's what I love. I love bringing such a diverse crowd. I have Hasidish, Litvish, Ashkenaz, religious, not religious. You know, the quieter, I have people like, Shimmy, what are the questions? I'm so nervous, I've never done them before. From singers. Even for the personalities themselves. Yeah, exactly. So a guy can get up there and sing and buy a wedding for 500 people, but if he's answering a question. He's freaking out, he's like, Sha! you know? And I'm like, that's so funny, because you rock it out on stage every night, but by the Shimmy shows. Talking about. Yeah, we know. <laughs> I have no but, clue, so. Shout out to you. I'm gonna you go through all those Shimmy shows now. But you know what, you know what was cool? But there's a so, bunch of. Pe- Diet peaches, so we can't talk. Yeah, yeah sorry. But, but you know what? I, I love that that th- through the interview, they were able to let their guard down a bit, yeah, open up, and, and people connected to that because, like, that's so me, you know. And they're like, and you watch it as the time went on. They're like, they got like, let's do another hour. I was like, yes, yeah, that, right. that's that's what I want on the shimmy shoes. I want I want to break barriers. I want I want you to feel free and and. Just inspire people. Another thing I learned is that everybody has a story. Mm. And you might go through, I had a bunch of people, unfortunately, that went through loss and lost loved ones. And every single one had a completely different experience. And every single one reacted to it differently. And that's what I want. I want people to come on and inspire. Somebody out there in the world, you're gonna give chizek to them. And they need, they're gonna hold on to your words. Cause these are regular people. Uh, my, my message is you don't have to be someone up there who's like, you know. Gadol uh, uh, Yeah, and those, they're amazing, the Gadol but sometimes we, you know, some people feel that they can't connect them because they're so up there and we're like here. I want to bring regular people and I'm sure that's a meaningful people podcast. N- nice, amazing. Yeah, you didn't MMP. But- you, didn't, you didn't butcher that. <laughs> I didn't, I, I was like, shoot, <laughs> where am I? Um, that regular people sometimes are the most, you know, inspiring to us because like we could relate to them. And you're like, you know, what? I could do that. I I could be grateful for three things because th- if they could do that in the hardest time, you know, just this week alone, I have actually that's on me. I didn't plan this. Ain't no Mavado. Ain't no Mavado. Ain't no Mavado. Ain't no Mavado. That says, what? Is it yeah, I'm saying for the Ruchama audience who's listening. Rechama Chaya Fruma. Rechama Chaya Fruma. My friend Chaya Bistritsky who was unfortunately Nifter. Um, and her, th- this, when people say, Shimmy, what inspires you? When people go through hardships and challenges that you can't even fathom. I mean, th- this kid is, is a teenager. Her daughter. I, her daughter, yeah, Chaya's daughter. And she's like, Shimmy, first she made bracelets, then Leila Nishma, she doesn't stop. Like, what am I doing next? What am I doing? You know, they take the pain and they challenge it to make a difference in the world, to like raise awareness, to make you think, to become better. And now onto her next project, she did Eno Mavado. And she was telling me that, you know, the sales weren't coming in, people weren't buying. So I was in West Park for Shabbos. I'm like, no, me, let's go. She's like, Shimmy, can you post it? I'm like, nobody cares about a flyer. <laughs> Come on, when you see a flyer, you're just scrolling next, right. next. We, we, want, we want to hear you. We want the story. We want to connect. So I'm like, Naomi, come on, on, on the story with me. She's like, Shimmy, are you crazy? I'm so embarrassed. It's not me. I'm like, would you do it for your mother? Because mm. uh, every dollar goes to tzedakah. Every dollar. L'zecher nishmat's her mother. Yes, l'zecher nishmat chaya. L'zecher nishmat chaya. And to, to think about how much money we could raise. Yeah. I'm like, you got to come on board with me. She's like, I'm so, I'm like, she's like, the second I said, well, would you do it for your mother? And she was like, I'm, I'm in. She's like, fixed her hair. Let's do this. You know how to guilt somebody. Congrats, uh, Jimmy. <laughs> she got up there and she spoke. She's like, my mother always said, Enod Melvado. Before and even during the challenges, she always, oh, everything's from Akash Baruch Hu. And if, if, if I'm going through this, that means it's for the best. She's like, this is going for tzedakah. And boom, sales from all over the Yaakov world. Yaakov actually just texted me. He wants to buy 500. <laughs> 500 yeah. 500 yeah. sweatshirts. I have a meaningful, so minute, how, have a meaningful minute credit card on me. Up, and uh, how, much, uh, how much per sweatshirt? So it's 500 times 15, I, 20? Okay, if there's one thing you know about me, I don't do money. <laughs> I don't do business. She, she asked me, she's like, Shimmy, people are, are messaging us from all over the world. What, what should I charge for international? I'm like, I just sell the product. I tell you. Yeah. Beyond that, I don't do money. I don't. But I don't do my go, business. I, I do want to plug it for someone who's listening now that would like to purchase one. Where could they purchase that? 
In old Milvado dot com. How do you spell that? I got that domain. I'm guessing it's A I N M I L V A D O. I think so. In oh, we missed the ode. <laughs> He's all ode. O D. O D. Yeah. Okay. A I N O D. Whatever. We'll, we'll hook you guys up, but you would make a difference. It's all for the duck on your. You put a and smile the whole message is: there's no one but him. On their faces. There's no one but him. There's no one but Hashem. Everything that happens. It's from Hashem. The one is in the... Yeah, and you know what? When I, when I told um, um, Mati Bistritsky, Chaya's husband, um, I, I was showing him, a, 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 oh my gosh, it was amazing. I got, a mess, I got so many messages, but one specific one just like pierced my soul. This woman said, I just purchased one. I don't know this girl on a personal level. I just wanted her to know that even though her mother can't give her in a physical form, I wanted to know that Cloudy Style is still here to be there for you and take care of you. And that's, that's so why nice. I purchased it. I'm like, oh. and, so and Mati nice. was like, that's, that's what I want. I, I don't want my wife to ever be forgotten. And if we could continue her legacy through this to help someone going through a hardship, then it's all worth it. That's really beautiful. Yeah. Shimmy, what are your pet peeves? What do you what hate? bothers you? Oh what my gosh. You? Number one. How much time do we have? <laughs> <laughs> Cheeseless pizza is the <laughs> number one hair in my food. Like uh, that is the worst. I was once in camp. I was always in camp. Oh, this one time, I was in camp. I'm not gonna say which camp. And you know, every camp is here in the food. You don't have to worry about that. Every camp. Just it was Arab Shabbos. You know when they give out kugels and 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 somebody was eating their cook and they found hair in their food. I'm so sorry, guys. Skip over yeah. for the next two minutes. <laughs> it's, no, if they're not eating, it's fine. But if they're like a middle, like a macaroni Mid and cheese. Mid-Kugel. Like, right. Mid-Kugel. Mid <laughs> they pull out hair mm. and they continue to eat. The, the, okay, that's a different level. Don't tell me you would continue I eating. may be You guilty. would continue. I'm You're telling, guy, we're guys. I, I think by nature, at first I was like gross and then I'm like, <laughs> it's delicious cook. Oh, come on. I can't believe it would move. You know, move. Start to, I also have this other know. thing. I think it's a Sephardi thing. All you Sephardi people out there, you totally understand me. Everyone else will be like, I'm crazy, but a shoe flipped over. <laughs> so, Blank like faces. on the floor? Um, yeah, like over. there's a shoe that's upside down. I will walk over. No, don't do it. Don't do <laughs> like it. Like this? Yes, it like pro- that. For those not listening, I'm holding my shoe upside down it's and she's watching. No, Echo. like if it's all, I will walk. Yeah. I will walk. It's like a back. superstitious thing. Yeah, I guess so. I don't know what it is. And I will walk and flip it okay, over. I don't. I. I. I can't, I'm not gonna believe that this is a Sparty thing. It's. It, it, I'm telling you, it's a Sparty thing. I'm telling Sorry, you. Ask your, in. Ask Baba your people. Sally all the time always mentioned this. The, don't do a virus. Do you know that I'm actually his great granddaughter? You are. The Baba Sally's? No. no. Wow. Yeah. But I, I, every too... time I say like, what? Am I? Like... Am I still hailing? That's see. Oh, I like that. Jimmy. Yes. What's your favorite mitzvah? I know this is cliche, but if du es Hashem b'simcha. We didn't get that answer Never. yet. I don't think so. No? Yeah. So not cliche until you said it's cliche, though. Oh, because like coming from me, but I, I, it's my favorite mitzvah. I love making people happy. It's, it's, I go to Dunkin' Donuts. I'm like, hey, we're live in Dunkin' Donuts, and I want to buy this man right here free coffee. And That's you awesome. just see him like light up. I'm like, score. There's a mitzvah. It's just so easy. Something that we've been asking all our guests, and it's usually a, it's a hard question. Please don't flip it back because on us, if you could spend an hour with someone in history who is no longer with us, who would you spend that hour with? Wow, does it have to be like from the Torah it or could be anybody? From anyone. It, anyone, whatever your answer, that's the answer. Um, Unless it's not politically correct, and we'll take it out. I I know I know that that's a question that you ask people. And I remember I had to like think about it on the way, and I still didn't come up with someone because it's like you could only one person. You can give it if you want two, but one. <laughs> um, I, I would want to spend time with my with my grandfather who was Nifter, um, like hearing the stories. I, I knew him as a little girl, but like not really, because we moved we and, from he lived in Israel. Yeah, and when, when I moved when I was six, but the stories that they said about him, he was like this modest, humble. Moroccan man living in in um, Kadima next to Natanya, um, and quietly he would go and feed the poor people over there, and no one knew. My father said like every day his father would like disappear for a bunch of hours, and only after he was nifter people would, you know, because he he made everyone promise not to, he didn't want anyone to know. 
And I was like, that's so amazing. You know, I was saying the other day, the other day um, on my Instagram, that like a lot of times I post what I do and, and these things because I want to cause a ripple effect. Because every time I post something, like I'll bring a coffee to the security guard in Chafetz Chaim. Someone else will do it then. And, yeah. and then like I get 20 messages. I just went and you know what? I went to buy coffee for, for the crossing guard. I'm like, yes, there's smiles being created everywhere because I do that. But at the same time, I was saying that real integrity is you have to do at least one thing every day that nobody knows about. Mm. You keep it on the down low. It's only between you and the Kaddish Baruch and it's so hard because you're not getting the recognition. It's I'm, so hard to do that. Right? Like yeah. When I was in camp, I, 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 when they're like, pick up the garbage after like Hull of War. I was like, is the director looking? Oh, yeah. You know, I, <laughs> I, I want thinking, everyone is noticing. I was thinking because I was reading this this book about Rabbi Trank that they wrote. I uh, just love them. And they, there were so <sighs> many things in the book that Rabbi Trank did that nobody knew about. Rabbi and Trank, he never, you, you mentioned him at, at, on, on, on the Shimmy yeah. Shmoos. Yeah. And apparently he's amazing. And I think his his family members reached Someone out to his, me. Yeah. And they're like, Shimmy, I have something to send to you. You're going to love this. Here's his speeches. Here's his... But it's so, yeah, Rabbi David Trank, who passed away a couple years ago, or, or a year a year ago. And he did so many things that people didn't know about. And reading the book and going through it. And, like, it's just hard because you're doing this thing. You're investing yourself. And you're not telling anybody. And the only time anybody will really find out is when Art School publishes a book about you. Exactly. <laughs> you, and know? You, you know... But it's, it's probably an amazing feeling also... To have that between you and Hashem. That, that, you literally feel like you're building yourself up spiritually. It, you feel it. It's like... And the same thing also with Lashon Hara. Like when... That's something I'm really, really working on. And to the point where I don't even tell people that I'm having this struggle. Nobody knows that I'm having this struggle besides Hashem. And I'm like... And, and now everyone listening. And now, yeah, <laughs> and now you all know. Now I have to pick something else. <laughs> but I, I, I feel... I, I can imagine it, it creates a strong bond between... Not, not that they're... I, I'd imagine. I, and I don't know if there is something I do that... I'm sure there, there are things that we do that people don't know about. A good thing. But it creates like a... It's like a... When you have when you have a secret with a friend, it creates a stronger thing. So when you have that thing with Hashem that no one knows, that yeah. And then when I get in trouble, like I get pulled over for a ticket, I, I, I'm like Hashem, remember that time when I I did? You, you only you know, nobody else knows. Please, please. And then he comes back. It's like okay, it's just a warrant. I'm like yes. Nice. <laughs> I just want to go back to, and say one thing sure. that like. Only when Arts Girl publishes it, then everyone knows how awesome and a boss you are, right? Um, I got this phone call a few months ago, and this person's like, Shimmy, I want to tell you that I'm so grateful for whatever it was that she was thinking of me, and like, you don't understand how much you mean to this. I'm like, okay, what do you want? And she's like, no, I seriously, I just want to tell you that. I'm like, what? She's like, she went to Alavaya, and this person was somebody's aunt, and she's like, if only that and knew what everyone felt about her and how much they looked up to her and she was a role model to so many people she didn't she didn't even know it she didn't feel it she's like why do we need to wait till somebody's published and waiting tell them now so you're, you're, you're challenging the audience right now to just pick up pick up the phone after you dropped it for an hour pick up the phone and call yeah. somebody <laughs> yes and tell them how you actually feel and then they're gonna be like what like they're gonna be thrown off they're like seriously what do you want like it happened in the zone Berta Coley. What, I, I actually went back to work. That sounds like a man. Name name. Dropping. <laughs> is that a state? <laughs> <laughs> it's like Sharita Nino. What is that? What is the first name? What is the last name? Berta Coley was a student from Achiezer Yeshiva. I actually went back to work in Achiezer for like a decade. Could you believe it? Wow. They took me back. Um, and Berta Coley ended up coming to the zone. I was in Achiezer and I was working in the zone. And Berta Coley... Um, we, it's funny we share her story like she was she was like one like a shimmy adar as a kid you know she gave us a run for our money and one day I'm, I'm running I'm, I'm program director we have an event coming up in the gym and I'm I'm very stressed out and, and she's like Mrs. Adar Ms. Dar, they, used to, they call me Ms. Dar M-I-Z-D-A-R because <laughs> Mrs. Adar is too many syllables <laughs> so they just dropped it Ms. Dar and she's like Ms. Dar I need to tell you something I'm like Berta not right now I'm very busy she's like like in the middle of the pathway and she's like no I really need to tell you something I'm like Berta what and she's like I love you and I really appreciate everything you do for me I'm like okay what do you want Berta she's like no, that's all. I'm like, what? And like, everything just stopped. I'm like, you really mean it? And I started <laughs> crying like a baby. And I gave her a hug. Everything sounded like I was busy. I was, nothing mattered. 
her words were so powerful and people have to realize words can make someone and or they could break someone and if we realize the power of our words we're, we're not gonna abuse them let's start using them and not when it's too late let's use them now there's a lot of there's a lot of negativity in the world you know you think <laughs> <laughs> And, Have you um, been watching the news, Reb Nachi? A little bit, you know. Um, there's a lot of negativity in the world. I think, though, that it's been, it's amazing. The Jewish world, I think, is there's a lot of simcha, but there's a lot of negativity, there's a lot of hawk. What's, what's, what's your message to somebody um, to get past that, to look past the negativity, whether it's in their own life, whether it's just in society at, at large? What's the message to them, how to be happy? First of all, our minds are very powerful. Our minds can make us do incredible things and our minds can make us do things that we're gonna regret. Such as looking at our WhatsApps, the news, uh, people that we follow on, on social media. I say like, like I, I keep going back to it. Like one person could be amazing for this one and inspiring, but you watch the same person and like, I can't, I can't it brings out bad vibes in me. I just, I get angry. Delete, what, unblock, not unblock, block them. I don't even know what it's called. Stop watching them because they're going to bring out the, the, the bad in you. And I just want to go back to your mind. Um, you know, we'll go back after because remind me how our minds are so okay. powerful. Because okay. I want to bring out a map. Once I'm here. Sure, go for it. I want to say it. Sage is yours. Um, remind me about the we're, we're halfway done, so we're. <laughs> <laughs> Seven hours later, go back. The milk is still good. Um, so, yeah, our minds are very powerful. So, Take control of your mind. Take control of your mind and start learning about the the power that you have, that you could control it. And number two, surround yourself with positive people. Surround yourself with good people because they're gonna make you they're gonna be a they're gonna play a big role in who you are and who you become. Um that that's a big thing I, I'm gonna say. Because there's going to be hack and there's going to be hack always. If it's not this hack, tomorrow it's the next hack. It's going to be, you know, and there's, ne there's negativity always. She's saying there's value in, in, I think what I just heard, which is really very powerful, is don't, don't ascribe to everything. Just because it's out there and everyone's following it, sometimes delete certain things from your life and delete certain people from your life. And not everything that's being said by everybody is something that you need to take in. Yeah, and you don't realize that you're sucked into the negativity till you're out of it, mm. and you're like, I can't believe I was part of that mess. And when you're out of it, you're like, wow, I could accomplish so much more. It took up so much brain space, you know? And it's a great answer. Yeah, I, 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 would, I would venture to what, say that. What was the, you want to remind holiday? The, the holiday thing? Yes, or? just going back to the power of your mind. I, I remember, um, you know, as like you were saying, uh, before I became shimmy, whatever, and, and as I was, you know, getting more roles and playing more roles in different organizations, and, and I'm not who I was. It was started out as a Sunday program, then I, uh, in the zone. Actually, it started, someone told me the other day, like, shimmy, do you know when you started to be you? I'm like, when I was born, they're like, yeah, but, but after that, <laughs> a few years later, um, I used to do, um, um, mitzvah weddings I don't like calling them chesed weddings but mitzvah weddings mm. and people would call me if if kalas were like bal tshuva or you know they Coming didn't have family town, members like stuff like that yeah or whatever it was and they didn't have anyone to dance by them they would call me up and we didn't have whatsapp then can you imagine like just having a chat send a letter oh yeah and then it got there four, four years later right. and sent <laughs> to <sh> yeah. <laughs> you are invited to a mitzvah wedding and by the time it got to them it was a mitzvah time so it was a big problem yeah. um, and I, I remember making personal calls like, from the house phone hi Khani Tuesday night are you in and, and I remember I kept my shoes that I would dance not at the upside down not chas no way. you just made her nauseous sorry, <laughs> sorry. Um, she's pregnant so and yeah, that's why that I remember just like um, who was it that asked me oh Charlie Arari I was I they have a Jay Inspire thing Erev Shabbos yeah and he said Shimmy what is it that makes you able to just get on the dance floor nobody's on the dance floor you just get up there and do your thing and I was like it's when you don't care what anyone else thinks and you realize that you have a power to give to the world, 
you you start living life differently. You don't care what anyone else thinks. So I, I just get up there and I do my thing. So fast forward, um, they call me up from the Chalabik, the first Chalabik ever in Brooklyn. Remember the big Chalabiks? But yeah. The first one. And they were expecting like 3,500 women. And I was like, oh my gosh. Danielle's like, Shimmy, I have this amazing opportunity for you. Like this, this is it. You know when like, you have opportunities? Like grab it. Hashem always brings opportunities to us. In, in, a, in a, oh my gosh, I have another thing. Uh, <laughs> Tiskel and Mitzvahs. Just remind me. We can finish it up in the hospital. <laughs> 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 oh my gosh. Um, well, it's going to take a while to get a bed probably in my mind. So we'll have all the time, right? Okay, great. Yeah. <laughs> no, but just remind me Tiskel and Mitzvahs, okay? Yeah, it's very important. It. Um, and I, I remember Danielle's like, Shimmy, you have such an opportunity to make a difference in so many, th- th- 3,000 yeah, women. Amazing. I'm like, Danielle, no. Like it was an, an automatic no I'm not doing it he's like why I thought you were going to be so excited I'm like I'm like you get up there in front of all these women what if what if they say I'm too loud what if they say like till then I did more you know low scale events and it was still scary but you know but this is like a whole different level and I and I was so scared I, I remember saying literally I remember saying tell him I can't do it why I'm like because I have stomach aches on Tuesday nights <laughs> like that's what I say he's like Shimmy really I'm like yeah tell them they'll understand they'll understand he's like Shimmy this is your fear your fear is stopping you from taking opportunity you just gotta jump in well, well, what exactly was the fear getting up on stage I had to speak people. I had to dance the fear I, of failure like being judged or fe- being rejected which judge rejected oh, they these. don't like me I'm too loud I'm too crazy no, I don't care if you think I'm crazy that I didn't care <laughs> but what if I forget my lines what if I I, I, I blank out what if I I, I, I I literally remember getting up there my, my I had my papers and I'm like I just my, my hands were shaking they were shaking because this was like the the, the the Guinness Book of World Records, we had the longest challah. Yeah. So we had that whole chavra <laughs> over there. And they're all coming, oh, the reporters were there. I was just freaking out. Wolf Blitzer from CNN reporting <laughs> from the challah bake. And you did challah. it. And, the challah. And what was it like once you did it? And I just, I, that's you what I said, you, you need to have that person mm. that believes in you because sometimes you need that push. And Bar Hashem Daniel, pushed me and made me realize that I, I'm, I'm just jumping in, I'm doing it. I literally jumped in there and I, I remember standing up there. That, the, there were different rooms, I had to open up different rooms because there were so many women and we couldn't fit them all. But I was in the main ballroom um, and they had like attachments of, of videos everywhere. And I remember standing up there, there was a woman with blue hair. There was a Hasidic Shalady with the, with the Spitzel. There was a Yeshiva Shalady. There were girls from public school. And everybody in between, the old, the young. And we're all standing there, and I remember the last song, we, we played one day. And I was like, no more wars, we're just gonna be one. Are you ready? And the music went on, and I was like, thank God. I. I, I jumped in and I believed in myself. So if there's anyone out there who's doubting themselves and is scared of what people are gonna say, failure, rejection, uh, um, success, we're afraid of, what happens now? Now pe- all these women know me. That's scary, right? What am I gonna do with that? Right. Whatever it is, on whichever level that you feel that you wanna do it, don't let your mind deny you of the greatness. Because the worst thing is looking back after 80, 90 years and saying, you know, they say when, when people are asked in the nursing home, what do you regret the most? It's not what you did do. It's what you didn't do. And that's the worst feeling. Like, can you imagine I could have done this? I sh- if somebody's like, you know, they have a few minutes to live, right? God forbid. And, and people were in that situation. And... The old thing, they're like, I wish I could have done this. I wish I gave her a kiss. I wish I took that job. I wish, I wish. Don't wish. Do. Mm-hmm. Don't wait. Create. Tiskel and Mitzvahs. Uh, amen, brother. <laughs> okay, let, let's finish off with Tiskel and Mitzvahs. Yeah, Tiskel and Mitzvahs. Um, my father, when I was a teenager, always, and younger, he's Israeli. So after the Shabbos meal, now Baruch, they were they became from, and they're, you know, they keep Shabbos, so... When after the Friday night meal, he would go upstairs and like, Shimi, garanim v'tei le'aba. Mm. Sunflower seeds and a tea. Like my father could make his own tea and he could take garanim, uh, some, like that's his thing with this newspaper. But that was my job, I always had to bring it. And I went, I got him the garanim and the tea, I would come up 
and he would scream shimmy tiskila mitzvot and I was like okay Abba whatever <laughs> every single Friday night and um, I, I didn't have what it means to be Zoha for a mitzvah till years later when um, it was the coldest day in New York City a few years ago and someone's like shimmy why don't you go and give people rides by the bus stops I'm like that's brilliant like you're gonna make so many people happy um, so I went down I, I, I got my car I went down Avenue J, and every single route that I went, the bus just left. Every single route. Avenue J, I, I saw the bus. Like, I'm like, come on! <laughs> Avenue M, nobody was at the bus stops. I missed everyone. Well, it was the coldest day in the year. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> but you know what? I didn't have one person to give a ride to. And I'm like, Hashem, I want to do a mitzvah. And I was like, but you need to be zocha for a mitzvah. So you could run after a mitzvah all you want, but at the at the same time, you have to be zocha. So... Tisco mitzvahs. I hope that everybody's zocha for mitzvahs on this world because there's no greater feeling than to be able to give of yourself to somebody else. Thank you for giving us. Thank you. Drop the mic. That was an incredible time with the one only Shimmy Adar and Mazel Tov. She had a baby girl. Yeah. Since we recorded that. Yeah, a few days after she walked out of here, she had a baby girl. So Mazel Tov to her and her entire family. And guys, coming up next week, we have a really exciting guest. Should we say? Let's say. Rabbi Y.Y. Rubenstein. Yeah, an incredible person. I, I'm going to go out on a limb and say he is one of the top three most interesting people I've ever met in my life. Yeah, and Yaakov hangs around a lot of interesting people. <laughs> but but he oh, he's incredible. Um, and we know there's a lot of new listeners to the podcast now. Mm -hmm. um, and if you just listen to this one, go back, listen to a few others. Listen about Uncle Moishi. Listen about you know Charlie Rari's life or Charlene Amanoff or Rabbi Feiner or Rabbi Weinberger or Tzvi Gluck. Or, there's Scroll so many. away there's so and many. find out what's for you. And of course... You can now listen on the Meaningful Minute app. So you can download it on your phone and the podcast is available at your fingertips. But guys, so nice to spend so much time with you. <laughs> so nice to spend more time with you. Ciao. Oh, I, I was going to say ciao. Ciao. <laughs>